The last week of Jesus Christ before the crucifixion. Before being crucified, Jesus lived a very intense week. But when we talk about the Passion Week of Christ, we need to keep in mind the difficulties that surround this theme. First of all, it is not possible to determine with precision the year in which the crucifixion of Jesus occurred. In fact, we know that there is an error of a few years in our calendar, and therefore Jesus may have been born between six and three years before the first year of the Christian era. Thus, the Passion Week probably occurred between the years 27 and 31 after Christ. Secondly, a similar difficulty arises regarding the day on which Jesus Christ was crucified. There is really no unanimity among scholars. Some argue that Jesus was crucified on Wednesday, others believe it was on Thursday, and still, others argue that it was on Friday. The discussion about this is lengthy, and all interpretations have their arguments and difficulties. But the most widely accepted position among scholars is that the crucifixion of Jesus occurred on a Friday. So, this will be the interpretation adopted in this video. Thirdly, there is also a difficulty related to the hours of the Passion Week. The Jews counted the hours in a very different way from the way we count time today. In biblical times, the day began and ended with sunset. For example, an event that occurred on Tuesday night, in the Jewish count, was already considered an event of Wednesday. But to make it easier to understand, in this video, we will consider the chronology of the Passion Week based on our current model of counting hours. Considering all this, let us now understand what Jesus did until the day of the crucifixion. The Passion Week of Christ began with Sunday, the day of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The Bible says that Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem riding on a donkey. As he entered Jerusalem on his way to the temple, Many people spread their clothes and branches of trees along the way. And in this event, there is a clear connection with the prophecies recorded in the Old Testament. The prophet Zechariah prophesied exactly about this when he spoke about a just and humble king who would bring salvation, and who would come riding on a donkey. Furthermore, Psalm 26, a messianic psalm, prophetically celebrates the procession of the Messiah. And in the triumphant entry, the crowd cried out exactly this psalm. Then, on the same day, Jesus left Jerusalem and spent the night in Bethany. On the next day, Monday of the Passion, Jesus left Bethany to go to Jerusalem. The biblical text says that he felt hungry and went to look for fruit in a fig tree, but found nothing, and then cursed that fig tree. In Jerusalem, Jesus performed the known cleansing of the temple. The Bible says that he drove out the merchants who were trading inside the temple. Later, in the afternoon, Jesus left the city of Jerusalem. Most likely, he returned to Bethany because the next day, Jesus' disciples saw the same fig tree that had been cursed before. This means that they passed through the same path. On Tuesday, once again, Jesus went to Jerusalem. Jesus went to the temple and began teaching. Then the chief priests, scribes, and elders approached him to confront him about recent events. They wanted to find some reason to be able to arrest Jesus. Also, on Tuesday, Jesus delivered his eschatological sermon to his disciples. 
He spoke about the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem and the events that would mark the sequence of history until the day of his second coming. On Wednesday, the leaders of the people gathered to conspire against Jesus, and on that same day, Jesus warned his disciples that he would be delivered to be crucified. It was also on Wednesday that Jesus was anointed with ointment by a woman in Bethany. Jesus himself related the woman's act as a preparation for his burial. On that same day, Judas Iscariot went to seek the chief priests in order to arrange a deal to betray Jesus. On Thursday of the Passion Week, Jesus gave instructions to his disciples regarding the preparations for the Passover. And while they were already participating in the Passover meal, Jesus told his disciples that the betrayer was among them. It was also on that occasion that Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, which should be observed instead of the Jewish Passover. On that same day, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. He also warned that the Apostle Peter would deny him, and prayed for his disciples. Between Thursday night and early Friday morning, there was a sequence of very important events. After dining with his disciples, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. Later, the betraying disciple approached Jesus and gave him the kiss of betrayal. Thus, Jesus was arrested and taken to be interrogated before the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was the supreme Jewish court that sought some accusation against Jesus. It was also during this period that Peter denied Jesus, as Jesus himself had predicted. After being officially accused by the Sanhedrin, Jesus was taken before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea. In a political maneuver, Pilate sent Jesus to Herod Antipas, the Tetrarch of Galilee. Herod Antipas, in turn, interrogated Jesus and sent him back to Pilate. In that context, Pilate presented Jesus Christ and Barabbas to the crowd, but the crowd preferred to absolve the evildoer Barabbas. Then, around six o'clock in the morning, Jesus was sentenced to death. After that, still on the morning of Good Friday, Jesus was flogged and then taken to Calvary. The crucifixion took place at nine o'clock in the morning, and Jesus suffered on the cross for six hours. Then, around three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus gave up his spirit to the Father and died. After that, a Roman soldier pierced Jesus' body to verify that he was really dead. But this soldier's action was also the fulfillment of the scriptures. After being taken down from the cross, Jesus' body was buried before sunset on Friday in the tomb provided by Joseph of Arimathea. Throughout the Saturday of the Passion Week, Jesus remained buried. His tomb was guarded by Roman soldiers. But on Sunday, the most spectacular day in all of history occurred. Early in the morning, Jesus Christ rose from the dead, triumphantly appearing to his disciples. But the Jewish leaders did not accept the resurrection. They bribed the guards of the tomb to declare that the disciples had stolen Jesus' body during the night. And this invented version spread among the Jews. However, the four Gospels clearly describe Jesus' empty tomb and his appearances after the resurrection. After 2000 years, the truth is that no one has been able to silence the good news of Jesus' resurrection.